Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 242. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, people, how are you doing? Hopefully you're going well and you're excited for yet another episode in this series that we've been doing, Eight Things to Give Up. Eight Things to Give Up because I want to make sure that you are equipped with the knowledge of what it is that you have to let go of in order to then capture the progress, the success, the things that you and I were all after improvement in various different ways. However, we each have things that we probably have learned and need to unlearn and therefore give them up. What does that mean? Well, we've been talking about eight different things uh, in this particular series. They are, again, uh, number one was doubting yourself. Then we went to negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing others, negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and then, of course, people pleasing. Now, we've covered most of them, so that means we're getting close to the end of this particular series, and today we are going to be talking about fear of success. Fear of success is what we're going to be discussing so that you can get out of your own way, I can get out of my own way, we can all get out of our own way and go out there and step into the greatness that we were born to be. It's interesting when you look up this particular title, Fear of Success, uh, and how it can still be just as paralyzing as all the other things we've discussed in terms of giving things up. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, I, you know, you, you think you know what something means until you take the time to look it up. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, neat. There's so much more information on this uh, than I actually expected. So uh, I found that to be interesting. And of course, I've got my own thoughts and things that I wanted to add to that. It's just amazing how common these things are. And if nothing else you take from these or this particular series is you, you should know that everything we've discussed, there isn't a, an achiever on the planet who hasn't dealt with all eight of these things you know, uh, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So you're no different. It, don't don't sit there and think that somehow, you know, somebody you you respect or admire, like, was just somehow born free of that. <laughs> uh, in various different ways, at various different times, for through various different circumstances, even everybody had to deal with it. And maybe now it's just your turn. Maybe now it's just your turn. Maybe for the first time you're giving, being given a choice to actually consider what you actually want to accomplish in life. And it's okay if it scares the bejesus out of you <laughs> or whatever else you'd like to say. I get it. Totally understood. So when we talk about the fear of success, I had no idea, but there are actually a couple of other terms that mean the same thing, depending on where you are from um, if, if you are one of our listeners from down under, you're probably more familiar with the term tall poppy syndrome. Uh, I'm told it's uh, prevalent in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and uh, also similar in Chinese and Japanese culture because uh, they have a saying that says the nail that stands out gets hammered down. The nail that stands out gets hammered down. And that's actually one of the things of, you know, what, how you can determine or or what the you have this fear of standing out and this is definitely one that i can uh relate to personally but what we're, we're going to get to that in in just a moment because there are, are three basic things uh, that tend to 
manifest themselves. And there are many thoughts that go through our head. And hopefully we'll be able to give you some tips, tools, techniques, just some different ways of thinking that will get you past what it is you are fearing. So uh, another form of this uh, it was called imposter syndrome. I thought this one was interesting. Uh, it was simply, it was a term that was coined back in the late 70s, 1978, uh, by clinical psychologists of all. And it just refers to high achieving individuals marked by an inability to internalize their accomplishments and a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. Now, being exposed as a fraud, despite Despite external evidence for their competence and, you know, evidence to the contrary, it doesn't matter. The point is they you still walk around with the fear and, you know, those exhibiting the syndrome remain convinced that they are frauds and do not deserve the success that they achieve. Here's another way of looking at this one, and this one was probably more closely aligned with the words fear of success. It was called the Jonah complex. Yes, Jonah as in Jonah from the Bible. I thought that was interesting. Uh, it's the fear of success which prevents self-actualization or the realization of one's potential. It's the fear of one's own greatness, the evasion of one's destiny, or the avoidance of exercising one's talent. I'm like, wow, all of these things, no matter how you say it, whether you, whether you call it tall poppy, imposter syndrome, Jonah complex, it doesn't matter. The result is the same. You, you have a fear of achieving your personal best, and therefore it hinders your progress and or achievement for many different reasons. I find this interesting, ladies and gentlemen. We do really bad damage to ourselves. It's like we can't win for losing. I mean, for example, I was thinking about this, and, and it's kind of like when I, I know I've said this to myself, because you're in this catch-22. You say, if I give it my all and it doesn't work, I'll be embarrassed, laughed at, ashamed, um, or, or somehow ridiculed and left for dead. Of course, we're going to be a little dramatic, right? Uh, instead, we should choose to believe my best effort may not result in what I think I want right now, because, you know, we just think we want stuff. We're not really sure. But it will result in zero regrets and be a part of me becoming my best, my best self and someone with something valuable to give, I, a.k.a. a contributor. And to me, that was a more empowering belief to begin to adopt. And th these are things that, you know, I think every person on this planet has had to work through in some way, shape or form uh, as well. Another, the opposite of that, which is why these fears, these eight things to give up are really crazy because, you know, on one hand, we're like, ah, if it doesn't work, this is what happens. If I go out there and try to be my best and tell people I'm going to do this and take over the world and, and, and you know, uh, with a bag of chips and buy all this real estate and do all these things, you know, if it doesn't work, this is what's in my future. So I, I'm afraid. But if it, but we don't let ourselves off the hook that easy because then we say, if I give it my all and it does work, then I will have to. I'll be like those other successful people I know. I'll have to deal with critics. Oh my God, people won't like me. I'll, I'll have to deal with well failing because on the way there, I know I'm not going to get everything right. And some of those failure events will affect other people. I mean, I'll have to deal with the possibility of being perceived incorrectly with no opportunity for defense. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, <laughs> I think it, I actually watch it sometimes because I think it's funny, where Jimmy Fallon does this, this session of mean tweets where, you know, because of the anonymity of the internet, people talk about, you know, celebrities and, and leaders and various industries yeah, industries, you know, stars and 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 politicians and uh, sports figures, etc. And people who have never met them don't really know them, but you can see a picture of what humanity might say, and you're like, I don't want that ever completely understood. And obviously, it's not like you know, you don't know them back. You can't really defend yourself, even if you you don't really have to. You just it's just something you you like. I don't even know how I would respond to that. Or here, here's another one. You know, if you give it your all, you'll you might you 
you, you might be prejudged, period. And it, there could be a change in social circles. But I, I kind of like, I'm at least, even if you don't like where you are, you're familiar with it, period. And because you're familiar with it, you know, striving to stay near it kind of makes sense. It's like, uh, I know what it's like to fail. I know I've gotten used to how I currently live. Um, and it's better than making it worse <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. And for whatever reason, we can perceive our advancement as a worse or at least an unknown, which then scares the bejesus out of us. <laughs> Uh, or if it does work, there'll be more responsibility. I also known as the opportunity to fail more people, right? Or I'll be exposed. I can't hide. Everyone will see who I am and know what's really going on. And oh, here's a big one. You've got expectations now of a repeat performance. No one hit wonder, right? It's one thing to do something awesome when no one expects it. When you are the underdog and no one is like watching or cares and they're like surprised. Oh my God, look what she did. That was so awesome. You are amazing. And you're like, you have no idea. I just barely got through that on my own. Awesome. Great. All I was trying to do was feed my family. Yay. All this other stuff just kind of happens. But what happens when they have that expectations and you still don't succeed on that second try? Or uh, a big one I know for myself was thinking about I'll be alone and no one will understand me. Or people will only talk to me because they want something from me. At that point, you, you lose this sense of uh, how will I know if I have anyone authentic in my life? Instead, here's something to choose to believe. My choosing to play small serves no one and only protects my ego. Givers gain. So drop the selfishness and just take the next step. Trust God. He will prepare me to receive when it's time. I believe that to be a way more empowering belief that can get you motivated and push you in the correct direction, in a more correct direction than shrinking back and being afraid. What are some of the other things that I found in my research? I just thought that that could be clues that you are fearing your own success. Just in case I haven't hit you yet, uh, here's a quick list that was given to, uh, that I found on lifehack.org, lifehack.org, uh, in their article titled, What to Do If You Have Fear of Success, Behaviors of Success-Fearing People. You don't complete your projects. This could be at work or at home. You talk about what you are going to do more than what you actually do. You are usually working on several projects at once, but not really focusing deeply on any one of them. You still have exactly the same things on your vision board that were there five years ago. You second guess yourself often. Distraction is your middle name. You don't think your work is ever quite good enough. And the biggie, you're on the verge of success and things start going really wrong. Now, I'm guessing one of those caught your attention, but here, here's the thing. When it comes down to it, that those are just symptoms of all of the deeper issues. And you know what? That it it is um okay. You're normal. And and it doesn't mean anything other than you're normal. But what is important is to develop a better belief system about these things because it can cause conflict. I mean, for some of us, you you have this we 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 can have a fear of appearing un spiritual because we've heard things uh, and, and sayings like rich people <laughs> are greedy um i've not i'm sure some are uh but i'm also sure that there are poor people who are greedy too um and here's what i know i i'd, I'd rather be in a position to give than to receive and we, we could think about maybe you've heard words like sellout, you're over ambitious, you are, are shallow. And these are labels that we, we choose to avoid because we're trying to not appear to be unspiritual. And, and for some of us, that could be, you know, uh, the, the biggest thing in our life. And that's great. But we're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. 
not everyone is going to like you and not everyone should. And the, the, the next one that we're going to be talking about is people pleasing. So we'll get more into that later. But you must begin to get clear on what you are willing to give in exchange for that which you desire, not only of money, but also time and energy and mental processes, your intellectual property. How much are you willing to give in order to get to where you want to go? As I mentioned earlier, the fear of standing out, that one was huge for me for sure, because if you're like me, maybe you grew up and uh, you were that kid who, or, you know, you just, for whatever reason, um, you you attracted attention, not because you were trying to, but because you knew the answers or because you ruined the <laughs> the curve for people. Uh, and, and, and your classmates did not necessarily enjoy that. Maybe you were a little socially awkward and that did not go over well. Um, I, I get that. So you learn to to shrink back and, and just try to fit in so as not to stand out. And therefore, you would be free. That was the solution. I want to be free of this ridicule, free of if I'm just like them, then they won't pick on me. There you go. Well, that doesn't do any good either. In fact, you may have heard this particular quote by Marianne Williamson, and I'm going to read it for you. And I hope that it inspires you in some way. See, <clears throat> our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. How do you feel hearing those words? Especially your playing small does not serve the world. Hmm. I know for me, when I hear those types of things, <laughs> I, I start to go, well, maybe I should write an offer on a, you know, another cell tower or, or an apartment building, or maybe I should try to help some more people get into this game and, and become real estate entrepreneurs. Or maybe I should, you know, what would it take to, to get on television? I don't know. Uh, I've not done that, right? You know, all these things begin to go through my head. And and maybe that those aren't the things you're thinking about. Maybe it's something like public speaking or just speaking up when you know you should. And, and, and here's the thing. Just go be awesome. Because the third thing is the fear of change. But change is natural. It's organic. It's what happens. There are four seasons. Well, in most places. I mean, if you live in Southern California, it can feel like one continual season, which I, I actually kind of like that. Um, However, nothing really stays the same. You don't stay the same. Hopefully you are different each and every episode. Maybe of these last uh, in these series, you've changed a little bit each time. And then only over time do you realize, oh, I guess I am different. I mean, we lose weight, we add weight, we gain muscle. Uh, we have children, we change, we, our roles change, our stage of life change. What we care about most, well, that changes almost daily. Uh, it, and the politicians change. Uh, you know, where we work changes. The work we care about doing changes. It, it, here's the thing. Success by its very nature means you now have or do or are experiencing something different. And the thing is, we really want to experience that something different. And that something different I know for me, it can occasionally be frightening. 
like what happens if I actually record a podcast and billions of people listen to it? Ah, because one of the things that you could, uh, you know, have this fear of giving up. I mean, I, it was interesting from the section on Jonah complex. Uh, one of the psychologists said that, 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 that people don't actually fear change. They fear the loss associated with change. So for example, success comes with the additional responsibility, which is a loss of freedom, fame or additional scrutiny, which is a loss of anonymity. Difficulty relating to those less successful, which is a loss of friendship or other relationships. General change. It's a loss of stability and security. And additional potential for loss or failing. And it's the fear of schadenfreude. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. You'll definitely find some interesting videos. (laughs) Here's the point. Guys, gals, people of all ages. All I'm saying is that you're normal. These are feelings that you have. They're not evidence that you shouldn't push forward. In fact, if anything, because you're having them, you know that the greatness that you desire to be is within you. It's already there. It's seeking expression. That's why you were given the thought. You were given the impulse. You were given the opportunities to move forward. And, you know, maybe you're like me, where your genius just happens to come out as an entrepreneur, and more specifically, a real estate entrepreneur. And that's cool. However, you've got to continue to develop those skills, because if there's anything that's true, is that all of us must subscribe to be going on this path of constant and never-ending improvement so that we can become the leaders, the voice, the ones who are willing to write the offer, fix the problems, and share in the positive results and take responsibility for the less-than-positive outcomes when they happen. The thing is, we've got to learn how to do that. And there's a way, and you can make it happen. It's just a part of the journey. And I understand the challenge because each one of us goes through it every day. Each time you go out there and you ask someone to, hey, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? They may say yes. And if you get on this string of yeses, suddenly you're like, "Ah, I'm out of control. And that can feel like a reason to play small. And what I am asking, nay, suggesting, no, requesting, dare I say, begging you to do is go do so much activity that it requires you to lose control and figure out a way to still make good on all the promises you've made. I think if you do that, you'll be surprised at just how successful you can be when you're forced to. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.